Today, I'm going to be diving a little bit deeper into the world of Power Queen, and I'm going to discuss the setup that we have here that might possibly help you out when trying to create an off-grid system, maybe for camping, your RV, or boating. And I'm going to be discussing the MPPT, the power inverter, and the 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery. And if you're interested, I'm going to have links in the description below on all the equipment that I'll be covering today. And I'm going to briefly talk about the 30 amp MPPT. Now, this is not a live setup. This is a display. I just want to give you a better idea of how to hook this up and what actually comes with it. So we have this Bluetooth uh, module that comes with it that plugs right here into the bottom of it. And we have a temperature sensor that comes along with it as well, but that's only good for lead acid batteries. So if you're using a lithium battery like we're gonna be using it today, that's something that you'll not even use. Now, let's take a look at the bottom so you'd have a better idea if you're gonna be wiring this. Now, we just put these battery terminals where they need to be located in conjunction on the MPPT. None of this is live, so this is just a demonstration to show you what you would need to wire it. Over there is your temp sensor that I talked about briefly, your PV wires that are gonna be going out to your solar array, your battery wires that would go over to your battery, and then the load wires that you see here are actually DC, and then there's the communication wire. And that's a quick overview of how it would be wired. It's a pretty simple process and pretty straightforward. Now, this is a 12 volt, 24 volt uh, capable MPPT, and it's suitable for 600 watts of solar power. The Bluetooth module has a range of 85 feet, and the back side of the unit is made out of die cast aluminum, and the front cover is just plastic. And how the MPPT works is it controls the amount of power that's feeding into the battery. So we have the solar array that's feeding into the MPPT. This controls the amount of power that's coming over to the battery. And the battery goes into the inverter and the inverter goes to our AC appliances. Now you can use the DC load of this straight from the MPPT. As you see right here, we come down and put it into a DC plug. Uh, this is just an example. Just want to give you a better idea of how you would wire it. And over here on the left, we have the 12 volt, 100 amp hour mini by Power Queen. And I'm not going to talk much about this because I've already done a full review on the battery. And I'll leave a card up in the right hand corner of your screen here and a link in the description below if you'd like to check that out. For the rest of the video, I'm going to be focusing strictly on the 12 volt to 120 volt or 110 volt 2000 watt power inverter. Now this is a pure sine wave inverter. And if you're not familiar with pure sine wave, I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. But I do want to point out this is 2000 watts that can handle up to 4000 watts of surge power. Now back to the pure sine wave. If you're not familiar with what that is, Typically in these inverters, they come in modified sine wave and pure sine wave. And of course the modified sine wave inverter is a little bit cheaper, but this is money well spent. Just go ahead and purchase you a pure sine wave inverter. The efficiency of an inverter is really important also. And this one has an efficiency rating of over 90%. The size of it is perfect for RVing, boating, and camping, and a lot of different other uses for it. Uh, you're probably wondering what the actual dimensions of it is. So I'm going to grab a tape measure and get some measurements. And the length of the casing at top is 14 and a quarter of an inch. And if we want to add the brackets and the end of the terminals, then I'm going to add about a half inch for the bracket over there. We're looking at 16 inches in total length. The height is seven inches and the depth is roughly three inches. And a feature that's not available on all inverters, and this one has it, is an automatic reset. Meaning if you overload the inverter, that it will automatically reset after a little bit of time. Not all inverters have that. And if you overload them, you gotta go back and manually reset it. This one has a automatic reset. And speaking of overloading, I'm gonna do my very best to try to overload the inverter in my test in just a moment. But first, we need to discuss the cables that come with the inverter. Each one of these have four wires connected to the lug and they are eight gauge wires on the positive 
and the negative. And I'm just not a big fan of having those four wires on that cable. I would much rather have a thicker gauge wire made out of pure copper. That wouldn't prevent me from buying the inverter. It's just something I wanna make sure to bring to your attention because you could buy inverters that have one solid cable, but actually they're not pure copper. They are what they call copper clad aluminum. And all that is, is an aluminum wire that has a little film of copper around the wiring itself. I wouldn't use those. I would only use wire like this that is pure copper. We could just go ahead and power this up and put it to work, but it's important for me to show you guys what would happen if we overload this. And I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that with a 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery because what I'm getting out of that is about 1200 watts and I need to go over the 2000 watts and this surges up to 4,000 watts. So I need to push this somewhere around 2,400 to 2,800 watts for a period of time to see if we can overload it and it would shut this down like it's supposed to. And I'm just not gonna be able to do that with a 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery. So I'm gonna have to disconnect this one and use a battery that I have in my stockpile, which is a 12 volt, 200 amp hour battery. And I hopefully will be able to connect enough appliances to the front of this to overload the inverter. What will happen if we try to do this with this battery we have a built-in bms in the battery itself that will shut down before the inverter so if we use a 200 amp hour battery the battery won't shut down before the inverter the inverter should shut down before that 200 amp hour battery does i've switched out the 100 amp hour battery for the 200 amp hour battery i have the appliances ready i have the big large shot fan right here probably out of frame um, ready to go and a heat gun and an adapter because we need to pull over that 2000 watts with the shop fan and the heat gun. We're probably gonna be around the 1800 mark. I have to find me another appliance and I need more than just the two outlets that they have there. So I kind of have to cheat a little bit. I wouldn't recommend doing this. I'm doing this to try to overload the inverter. It's not the safe thing to do. So I wanna see what happens when we push it over its limits for a certain amount of time. And when I turn the sander on because it surges for that motor, it almost shuts it down. So what I wanna try to do is actually have it kick off. We're gonna see if it will actually do it. I don't wanna damage my appliances because this is not good for your appliances either. But I wanna make sure that this does what it says it's supposed to do. And I'm gonna start by turning the sander on because it pulls so much juice You'll hear that this has just a little bit of a problem or we get a warning signal of some sort, but it surges as this motor starts to kick on. And I wanna see if I can capture that. So we'll flip it on. And it surges to 500 and some watts. I've seen it go as high as 600. Now we'll go with the fan and you'll hear that it does nothing when the fan kicks on, but we're gonna be up around that five, 600 watts. Then next, we'll turn our heat gun back on. And here we are, we're only at 1,685 watts. And I really hate using this shop back because it's so loud, but it uses about 500 watts pulling around 2100 watts and I've used all of my outlets up there we go we're having no luck that way so I'm gonna unplug this one I'm gonna plug this in gun back on and we'll plug another fan in that is starting to beat but we're gonna see if we can get it to overload plug that fan back in and turn it on I think it will stop in a minute everything shut down after about five minutes of overpowered. All right, so we our inverter just kicked back on. Now that we know that the protection is working correctly, let's get a sound test. Let's see how noisy it actually is or how quiet it is. So when I'm talking, you'll see that sometimes this goes up to 72 to 78 on the decimals. So let's see if we can do this and you'll be able to see it. So you'll see I'm around the 70s. Now, if we go up here and we get about a foot away from the inverter itself and the fans are actually on that side. 
but I'm gonna do it right here. So up close, we're in the low 60s. Now let's move back about six foot, seven foot, and we're right at 50. And if you're unclear of what 50, 60, 70 decimals actually mean, then I'm gonna put a little chart right over to the side and that'll give you a better understanding of how loud or how quiet those fans run at. I know that I wasn't able to provide all the details on the inverter, but I would hope that I was able to give you some type of insight on what it's capable of. And I appreciate you hanging out with me to the end of the video. Because you're at this point in the video, I think that you're really interested in solar, inverters, batteries, MPPTs, whatever it might be. So I wanna recommend you to go over to DIYSolarBuilds.com, sign up for my new website. That's a place where you can ask questions and find answers on anything related to solar. And as always, if you wanna continue the conversation on what we talked about today, be sure to check it out. And before we head out, I wanna just say thank you for watching.